Scoring udders consist of two independent scores, teat size and udder suspension. For each female, both scores will be taken from the same quarter of the udder that is the combined worst quarter for each trait. Scores should be collected on the dam's udder within 24 hours of calving. So we start by first evaluating the entire udder to determine which quarter is the combined worst for both teat size and udder suspension. After identifying the poorest quarter for both traits, determine which trait to score first. Both teat size and udder suspension are scored on a scale of one to nine. Let's start by looking at how to score teat size. Teat size is determined by evaluating length and circumference of the teat. A score of one represents a very large, balloon-shaped teat. A teat with a score of one would require assistance for a calf to nurse right after birth. On the other end of the scale, a score of nine represents a very small teat. In the middle of the scale, a score of five is an intermediate or moderate-sized teat. Teats that are difficult for a newborn calf to latch and nurse may cause the calf to not receive adequate colostrum, which can impact the calf throughout the remainder of its life and lead to health issues down the road. We'll look at how to evaluate udder suspension in a moment, because remember, you would score both traits on the same quarter of the udder. But for educational purposes, let's look at a few examples, just focusing on teat size for now. What we notice right away is that there is not a lot of variation in the quarters and all appear pretty uniform. We will focus in on the front right quarter. As we look at the quarter for teat size, we can tell that it's not extreme on either end of the scale, but it will be on the upper end of the scale as it's not a large teat. As we compare to the sketches, the teat is longer and larger than a nine, but smaller in diameter than a score of five. This udder scores a seven for teat size. Let's take a look at another example for teat size. As we evaluate this udder, the porous combined quarter is the back left. At first glance, we see that we'll start on the bottom half of the scale as this teat is considered large. As we compare it to the sketches further, it's not as large or extreme as a score of one, but it is larger than a score of five. We score this female a three for teat size. Here's a final example for teat size. Focusing in on the front left quarter, we notice right away that this teat is gonna be on the small teat size end of the scale. It's very small in both length and diameter. As we compare to the sketches, this female scores a nine for teat size. Here are those examples side by side with scores of seven, three, and nine for teat size. We'll now take a look at how we evaluate the suspension of the udder. We are looking to see how close or tight the udder is held to the body cavity. A score of one represents a very pendulous udder with poor suspension. Weak udder suspension indicates a breakdown of the suspensory ligament, which can lead to difficulty for a calf to nurse or injury to the udder. On the other end of the scale, a score of nine represents a very tight udder that's held close to the body cavity. In the middle of the scale, a score of five is an intermediate suspension. Let's take a look at a few examples for scoring udder suspension. Looking at this udder, let's focus in on the back left quarter. Right off, we notice that the suspension is not extreme in either direction, so we look to the middle of the scale. As we compare to the sketches of scores five and seven, the suspension lands right in between intermediate and tight, so this female scores a six for udder suspension. Looking at another example for udder suspension, let's go back to the cow we scored for teat size. If you remember, we chose the back left quarter as the combined worst and scored a three for teat size. Now looking at the quarter for udder suspension, we notice right off it is going to be on the bottom half of the scale as it is more pendulous. As we compare to the sketches, it's not as pendulous of a score of one, but it is more so than a score of five. So this female scores a three for udder suspension. We'll look at a final example for udder suspension. This female we scored earlier with a seven for teat size. Now focusing in on udder suspension, again, evaluating the front right quarter, we see that it's somewhere on the upper half of the scale, 
as it's not an overly pendulous udder. This udder has a tight suspension, but it still isn't held too closely to the body cavity, so it scores an eight for udder suspension. Here are those examples again to see them side by side with scores of six, three, and eight for udder suspension. We have looked at the two traits for scoring udders, teat size and udder suspension, and evaluated various examples from across the scale. There are a few guidelines to follow when scoring. Udders should be scored within 24 hours of calf birth. At the same time, birth weight and calving yeast scores are recorded. Scores can be recorded on not only first calf heifers, but each calving after, and score without consideration for the age of the female. As with any subjective trait, the same person should score all females in a management group for consistency. While scoring, it is recommended to have the scoring guide provided by the American Angus Association handy to be able to compare the teat size and udder suspension to the sketches for each score. If you have additional questions, contact the Performance Programs Department at the American Angus Association. Thank you for your commitment to education and pursuit to advancing the Angus breed.